Hi folks, welcome back to the Motorcycle Inquiries and today we're going to have a look at business ethics and we're going to see um, whether uh, utilitarianism or Kantian ethics is a better approach to business ethics, um, whether corporate social responsibility is just hypocritical window dressing or whether it is actually um, something that is important, um, whether human beings can flourish in a market of capitalism and consumerism, um, and whether globalisation is actually good or bad for ethics. Okay, so regarding business ethics, we need to think about um, Kantian ethics and utilitarianism, and how they play in. So first off, we need to think, um, does corporate social responsibility uh, this idea that businesses have got the responsibility to do more than create profit have any validity. Now you could say yes, in that uh, there have been some very successful philanthropic businesses. Tight blind corner. There we go. Yeah. Um, so there have been successful philanthropic businesses such as Cadbury, Roundtree, Titus Salt. All of them created um, places for their workers to live. Um, and they did this out of generally religious duties. So, yeah, there is some level of co corporate social responsibility there. Adam Smith, the founder of liberalism, who Mil Milton Friedman was inspired by, um, even he was really kind of utilitarian, said that good ethics is good for business because it's good for the reputation of the business. Uh, wages stimulate further business. I mean, we saw this with Ford in the early 20th century. Uh, Henry Ford started paying his uh, workers five dollars an hour which was more than any other business and then his workers bought more capitalist consumerist goods good for business good for the reputation good for the economy even at that time as well and you could argue there's a Kantian sense of duty as well that um, if you are a Kantian um, then ethics should always um, be greater than the needs of business you can't divide the two but um, it only counts as being good, good if you are genuinely motivated by being good and not cynically doing it just to make yourself look good. And this is where we go on to the perhaps the no side. Um, Milton Friedman suggests that uh, the only duty of a business is to make money, um, but within the rules of fair and open competition. So, you know, everyone should be fair. Everyone should essentially, every business should do its duty, which is to, uh, um, to, to make profit, but in a fair way, which is actually quite Kantian in a sense. So Kantian ethics doesn't lend itself easily one way or the other. In practice, as well, a lot of businesses do cynically market their products in an ethical way to try to, um, to, to sell products. Take innocent smoothies, for example, just innocent products. They're owned by Coca-Cola. Um, you know, they, they, and this wouldn't, yeah, this is a problem because Coca-Cola is a big consumerist giant. And being deceptive is not acceptable to the utilitarian or the Kantian. So the can, uh, capitalism seems to be a bit of an issue here, consumerist capitalism. Um, can human beings flourish in a consumerist and capitalist world? Well, you could argue that some human beings can flourish, um, particularly the ones who make all the money. Um, but mostly you'd say no. Um, not all can flourish because the system is based on self-interest, individualism, competition, uh, and competition involves winners and losers. Self-interest prevents true flourishing. Marx would suggest that capitalism is based on inequality and exploitation, uh, which prevents flourishing. Privatisation often puts profits ahead of social goods, you know, like railways, utilities. Privatisation doesn't actually make it better, it just makes somebody rich. And to Kantians, a consumer, just the idea of consumer, implies using a person as a means to an end. And that breaches the categorical imperative. Um, and we could also consider uh, Morris's idea of useful work versus useless toil. Work is only really useful and positive if there's a hope of rest, a hope of a useful product that can help people's lives, and the hope of some level of satisfaction. Let's just let this guy come past. Oh, he's giving me a bit of space. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. How about you? Yep, thank you too. Alright, so, um, so you can't flourish without those. And there's also the question, does globalisation help or hinder good ethical business practice? Um, you could say that it actually it does help good business practice, 
like a utilitarian would say it increases the living standards for workers in factories etc um, and also access to communication technology which comes through mass production across the globe has helped save lives and expose injustices of some of those businesses themselves um, but you could also say that it hinders good ethical practice um, because um, outsourcing to other countries suppresses wages, uh, loss of jobs to other countries um, can damage economies and societies. I mean, look at Flint and Detroit in the state of Michigan, uh, really badly damaged by the loss of the car industry. Um, there's also the exploitation of other countries' workers, poor rights, because uh, countries are desperate to hold on to businesses. That goes against the categorical imperative. So speaking of categorical imperative, on to Kantian ethics. The strengths of it. It's easy to follow regardless of the size or scale of your business. So good for business ethics. It encourages honesty in employees as well as in employers. So, you know, no more overclaiming of expenses, for example, which uh, employees often do. So you have more trust between employer and employee. Um, and encourages the rights and autonomy and dignity of people in the workplace, which is all good for flourishing. But weaknesses, it's more demanding sometimes harder to follow um, than utilitarianism. Um, you could argue it's unrealistically high standards to apply to a business and to employees. Hi there. Um, it's unrealistic to ignore profits when businesses are designed to make profit. And the categorical imperative could be unhelpful to businesses that need to make specific decisions in specific circumstances. You know, uh, Kantian ethics are very much fixed. And motives are often hard to assess in other people. There are a lot of blind corners around here, aren't there? Uh, yep, okay. Um, yeah, motives are difficult to assess in others. And so, uh, because business is all about trying to work out the motives of other people, interactions, um, you know, it, it could be just unrealistic. And Friedman's focus on profit is clearer and less likely to cause conflict between duties. Because Kantian ethics is at risk of conflict between duties. And um, that is that is an issue in business ethics too. Duty to make profit versus duty to look after people. What about utilitarianism then? Um, well, there are strengths. It gives significant freedom for businesses to calculate what is right, based on the hedonic calculus. Offers a variety of routes to flourishing, improving the chances for you know, overall flourishing. And um, offers a non-emotional approach. Um, but the weaknesses are that calculations can lead to atrocities, such as the Ford Pinto, where it was decided it would be just cheaper to let people die. Um, and utilitarianism depersonalises people and removes their rights, which is a real problem, um, particularly if you're talking about like, workers' rights and things. And also it's hard to make the necessary calculations, especially when many people are involved. What about what happens into the future? So there are lots of reasons why utilitarianism is very difficult to manage. So overall, Kantian ethics is easier um, until you run into some sort of serious difficulty. Utilitarianism is better at avoiding the serious difficulties, but it's harder in the day-to-day. -day. I think the only thing that can really be taken from this is that consumerist capitalism actually goes against both. <laughs>